You don't know anything at all about us! You know, talking down to people isn't very nice. It would have been better if we'd done this after you had a chance to get to know us a little more. Greetings, Professor. Nothing to report. I'm Harry Potter. The police won't be able to handle him. But it should be easy for me. Selica, don't do this! I'm not the guy she needs right now. What do you want me to do next, Orca? Hand over the ring. Don't you worry, Professor. I'll get it back. Are you willing to join me? Can't. I've got to go pump some iron. Brace! Did you find some more strays? Don't worry. I'll protect you. Come on, let's go. And all those voices still won't go away! <laughs> What is up, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, Hacker Clan, Hacker Family. Hi! Sorry, guys, I meant to start this stream uh, an hour earlier than this, but uh, some, some work stuff came up I had to deal with, and uh, here I am. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit shorter stream today than what I did yesterday, and, and what I used to do in, in days of yore, but uh, the trade-off is that I'm gonna try and stream more often. So, shorter streams, more often. That's the, that's the thinking, anyway. Uh, yes, welcome. Those of you who missed it yesterday, I'm back. Here I am. Uh, we're playing through Arcadia Fallen, which is very horny. Let's do this. That's not, that's the scene we're already in. This is the one. There we go. Oh, hey, and it's not. Boop. Did that fix it? Yeah, there we go. All right. Yeah, it's horny. You'll like it. <laughs> uh, can I... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I needed to... I need to restart it. I needed to turn on my controller before I launched the game. This is going to get loud for a second. Ha! Ah, I got to fix that. Do that. And then do that. And I should be good. Let me know if you guys can or cannot hear the game. I think you... Yeah, you should be able to. Alright. And the way that I've got things rooted now... Cool, good. Everything's working. The way I've got things routed now, I should be able to hear all of the, the stuff that's getting to you guys. Which is the way I want it. Great. I think we were actually over here for most of the playthrough yesterday. And uh, where did we leave off? We have a lot of places we can go, stuff we can do. Oh, that's right. We were learning some res recipes at home. We could start with that while we shoot the shit a little bit. It's getting late. Are you ready to retire for the night? What? No, I don't want to do that. Let's go instead. Make sure you visited everyone you wanted to before proceeding. Okay, so let's not do that. Now that I know that that's a thing... Let's go talk to everybody. We'll go to the alley. <sighs> yes. This is a nice spot. Empty. Quiet. Perfect place to just... Disappear. <gasps> oh, hi. <laughs> what brings you out here? Uh, always going jokey. <laughs> Mime, we can't keep meeting by the trash like this. <laughs> yeah, I gotta... I gotta adjust that. That's real loud. That, that should... that should help. <laughs> I guess dark alleyways have sort of become my natural habitat no. lately. It's not like I'm doing anything bad or anything. I just get a bit overwhelmed at times. All this walking around, talking with people, facing down scary stuff. I 
just becomes a bit much. I just want to run and hide. I, I don't, though. We're not going to find a way to solve this mess if I hide in the trash all day, but, you know, it's just nice to breathe a little once in a while. Take in the nice, fresh fumes of garbage decomposing. You understand that, don't you? Actually, I understand that feeling all too well. It's okay to be scared, and to need a moment to gather yourself. Really? I didn't realize you felt that way. You seem like the sort of person who's so put together. You stand up to help, even when none of this is your fault to begin with. It's very admirable, but... Call me selfish, but... I'm glad you can feel like this, too. It makes me feel a little less silly for hiding out here. Tell you what! If you promise not to tell Victoria about my hiding spot, then I won't tell either. If either of us needs a moment to breathe, well, then we can come here. Maybe together. Maybe naked. <laughs> it's brilliant, right? I have... Some you were questions. acting pretty weird when we went out to the forest. What was all that about? <laughs> Me? Weird? No, no way. <laughs> so you noticed, huh? I'm sorry I was acting weird. The forest is a special place for me. It was where Victoria found me and I just... Well, there are lots of things I'd like answers to, but... It's not really all that important. I'll stay on track from now on, don't you worry. I wonder... I would like to talk about our companions. <laughs> We're quite the odd bunch now, aren't we? Who do you want to talk about? One at a time. Tell me about... What do you think of Elizabeth? Well... She's nice, if not a little bit... scary. It's like, you look at her and see a nice old lady, but then you look at her and... feel like a tiny mouse staring up at some ancient, powerful beast. But I guess that might just be me, <laughs> since... She's your teacher, after all. Uh, what's she like to you? <laughs> well, when the moon is full, she turns into a frightening beast that wanders the town and eats the little kids that forgot to do their homework. <gasps> You're joking. That, that, that's a joke, right? So, you know Victoria. Can you tell me more about her? Um... I don't really know her that well, honestly. She just sort of showed up in my life all of a sudden and got me dragged into this whole mystery about the demons. Scared me senseless, honestly, but now that I've gotten to spend more time with her, I think she means well, even if she's a bit... intense. Tell me about... What do you think about this Michael fella? <laughs> He's great fun to be around. He's always smiling and positive, and doesn't seem to mind my spiritness at all. I feel like he's hiding something, though. I notice him staring off into space, and he just looks so... sad. I hope we can become friends so we can help him with whatever... I talk for a living. I hope we can become friends so we can help him with whatever he's struggling with. Hopefully before Victoria murders him. So... And what are your thoughts about Anne? I wonder... Well, she seems sweet, but also really quiet. She's very focused on her research, and she only ever talks to me to ask questions about the spirit locket. It'd be nice to get to know her a little better, but honestly, she doesn't seem interested in making friends. I wonder... Oh, wait. <laughs> Matt, bleh, bloop. Already did that. All right, we're done. Off, then. Well, we should get back to work. Let's go. Right, back to work. Sealing demons, saving the world, all that stuff.
The town square is busy and buzzing with people, eager to share stories and gossip with one another. However, one lone figure stands out, staying off to the side and staring at the crowd with apprehension. <laughs> Planning out some new experiment, are you? I'm wounded. I thought I was your favorite guinea pig. <sighs> Don't be ridiculous. I wouldn't learn anything interesting from studying the people here. You remain as my only test subject. Quinn just insisted that I take a walk and get to know the town. I honestly don't see the point, as I will be leaving this place soon, but here I am anyway. Well... Quinn is right. Anemone Valley is a really nice place once you get to know it a bit better. Uh -huh. Right. I'll need more concrete evidence than that to be convinced. Was there something you wanted, by the way? I might as well keep you here while I pretend to be sightseeing. That way, if we get chased down by an angry mob, there will be at least two of us running. So. One at a time. I'm curious. What exactly is it you think you'll discover from researching Mime and me? If things pan out right, then these experiments might yield a solution to the Empire's shortage of magic energy. Well, we got a romancer. Uh, and we'll go the amused route. <laughs> wow, Anne. I don't think I've seen you this excited since you almost tried to try the blah blah. The, yeah, I'm real good at flirting. I don't think I've seen you this excited since you almost tried to climb me to see my locket. Oh, please, you're not that tall. <laughs> and of course, your locket is exciting as well as it is at the desert. Is exciting as well as its curious nature, is the very key to my ambitions. That line confused me. As things stand right now, all Tinker Magic creations need a source of magical energy to power them when a mage is not near. Almost all devices today are powered by magical crystals. Since there are only so many crystals to go around, this means the cost of those crystals steadily continues to rise which in turn gives a disproportionate amount of power to those who own the crystal mines, since there's no alternative. But you don't need a crystal. You are a completely normal, no magic human, using an alchemy table without any clear power source. If I can figure out how you do it, it might very well change the world as we know it. Uh, yeah, we're going jokey. <laughs> A couple of magi folks saving the commodities of the rich. You think we might get a parade or something? I've always wondered what it might, what it would be. Um, I've always wondered what it would be like to have a statue raised in my image. Uh -huh. I wouldn't count on that. I am not doing this to help anyone but myself. Those people and their petty problems mean nothing to me. But with a discovery like that, I'm absolutely certain to be granted a professor title. Then I can go back to doing whatever research I want, and the world can continue to slowly destroy itself for some other dumb reason. I wonder... Hey, uh, you and Quinn seem to be... close? <sighs> Quinn is one of those people who grows on you over time, and once ensnared, they'll not stop shoving all their friendship and love on you. They are my best friend, honestly. We were both rather quirky compared to some of the other kids growing up at the Academy. Despite Quinn being a year ahead of me, we just clicked and have remained strong friends since. Tell me about... Yeah, you, you keep returning to this professor thing. Why do you want to become one so badly? That makes sense. I guess it wouldn't make much sense for someone who isn't a mage, but I'll try to explain. Once a mage has graduated from the academy, we're thrown out. Some would call it being reassigned to professional positions, but that just means we get thrown out and into a job we didn't choose in a random city we don't know. Then we have to work the rest of our lives, praying that we don't make a mistake that'll land us in prison, or worse. The Mage Academy is the only place where we can be free to practice our craft without having the fear that a single mistake or misunderstanding could be the end of us. But the only people who get to stay at the academy after graduation are the professors. 
those few experts who are allowed to study their craft to the benefit of all. The ones tasked with teaching the next generation. That's what I want for myself. Hence my current trial. I'll be off then. Okay, well, uh, we should probably get back to the mission at hand, right? Bye then. You're right. The sooner we get this demon nonsense out of the way, the sooner can I begin running some tests on you and mine. So, Anne, I take it you're from the Mage Academy. That would be correct. And you are a wild mage, an unauthorized practitioner of magic. <laughs> Saying it like that makes it sound a lot more exciting than it is. Don't you ever get tired? Being on the run, having to live your life in secret? It sounds exhausting. What can I say? I just really don't like doing homework. All right, we'll go talk to the guy that everybody wants us to go talk to. The air inside the tavern is warm, and a pleasant scent of burning firewood and savory foods washes over you as you step inside. Michael is lounging by the bar, wine glass in hand, his brightly colored robes making him stand out against the mostly wooden interior. What can I do for you? Why, hello there, Nines. Here to join me for a drink? Sure, why not? Okay. I would like that very much, yes. Michael smiles and motions for the barkeep. A drink appears in your hand soon after. <laughs> A toast to us, then. Demon slayers and supernatural investigators. What a fate I've stumbled into. He takes a sip of the deep red liquid before setting the glass back down, giving you his undivided attention. Let's see. So, what brings you to seek me out like this? Got some curiosity you need sated? Or maybe... something else? <laughs> Tell me about... Yeah, uh, for someone who's considered an outlaw, you're not that good at keeping a low profile, are you? I find it's a balance you have to tread. Blend in too much, and people will think you are shifty. Be loud and colorful, and people will take notice. But if you're quiet and colorful... Well, people will still notice, honestly, but there's no fun in dressing like a fugitive. If my handsome clothes are what end up getting me killed, that's a fair trade for being fashionable, is it not? No, I don't, I don't think I would agree with you on that. <laughs> so, a wild mage, huh? Hmm. Curious, are we? <laughs> don't worry. I'm not nearly as interesting as the stories make us wild ones out to be. I'm a mage, but I didn't study at the proper school, and am therefore considered a dangerous individual. <laughs> I bet a bunch of those people calling you dangerous didn't go to school either. <laughs> and quite a lot of them are pretty dangerous as well. But the truly dangerous ones? The ones who went to school. Big, expensive ones, made by the very magic they fear. Studying their verses under the glow of mage lights. The irony never fails to amuse me. I wonder... Why is it that you never went to the academy? I thought the government had people scout out kids with talent and bring them in. <laughs> it wasn't like they didn't try. My past is not that interesting, to be honest, but it isn't exactly a cheery fairy tale either. One best not bring down the mood in such pleasant company. Maybe I'll share it with you some other time. Hmm? <laughs> well, that's understandable. Let's talk about something else then. See you around. Something like how I'm leaving. I should get back to this whole mission quest thing. Michael smiles, 
picks up his glass. All right. Very well, then. I will be here if you have more questions. All right, so we've talked to those three. There's nothing to do with the mine. In fact, I can't even select it. Uh, I've still got an exclamation point at the flower shop. Let's go back there and see what's going on here. Welcome back. Oh, Nines, you're back already. What can I do for you? We did it. We went out to the forest and I gathered your samples. Can you use them to figure out what happened to the forest? That's wonderful. Nines, this is amazing. I should be furious you went out there, though. Well, at least you didn't go alone. It's just... I can't help but feel something bad is about to happen. It's like a slow storm rolling in, and I cannot stop it. I'll get straight to work. I'll let you know as soon as I've learned anything new. I'll be off then. Well, that's all for now. See you later, Quinn. Take care. And try to stay out of trouble. Uh, let's talk with Elizabeth a little bit more. We could spend some time just grinding Welcome some... Back. Oh, hello there, Nines. Welcome back. Did you need something? Have we asked her questions? I see. No. I'll be off then. Be careful out there. No, go back. So, all we have left to do before we end the day would be to find all of those alchemy recipes. I'll do it. You can spend some time grinding that for a minute. Oh, this is why I was over on this side of the screen. Uh, yeah, okay, so... Let us mix that with that and that. And that should create... Why can't I... There, create... Another discovery! A headache remedy. Oh, I might be pretty much done here. Nope, okay. We got a couple more. Mark, mark, mark. Let's see, we need... Uh... Oh, hey. What just happened? Right, I have to tell it to mix. Okay, we need... Uh, two of these. And... One of these. Look at that! And... From there, we need... That. Another discovery! Boom! Think that's everything? Yeah, that's it. Cool. That's easy. I guess I could do them all over again to try and get them done more efficiently, but what's the fun in that? Cool. Whoa, look at that! And another recipe perfected. Wow, Nines, you're getting quite good at this. Thank you, dear. I must agree. Well done, dear. This should be enough to keep us going for a while. Uh, Great. <laughs> then I can proceed to use all our headache cures, because I am beat. Are you sure? Uh, but please don't drink all of them. That really can't be healthy. About that. But, since we're taking a break, 
I've been wondering, Elizabeth, about this locket. How did it come to be here in your shop? Uh, yeah. I... I've been wondering about that myself. Why is this happening? Better? Worse? The same? Come on! Background removal. Wiggin' the fuck out. Uh, yeah, okay. It obviously isn't a normal alchemy table. I see. Always so perceptive. I guess I owe you an explanation. I wonder. You are correct. Our old alchemy table wasn't just any table. It was always a spirit locket. One which I had altered to resemble a normal table so I could hide it here within our shop. <laughs> Elizabeth, I didn't realize you had it in you. Breaking the law like that. Letherous mercy. Save your jibes, nines. I obtained the locket legally. In fact, the locket you now hold was mine to use when I once worked as an alchemist under the paragon of Eridus. You used to work for the Empire? Yes. Many years ago. I come from a long line of alchemists and, like you, was a promising talent. Though when the Empire was in dire need of people with our skills, I volunteered. I worked for many years together with the Knights of Eridus. I wonder... Oh, could it be? Was that how you met Alethea? <laughs> That's right. She and I were once assigned to the same mission, and, well, the rest is history. Uh, let's do what kind of mission? I wonder. What kind of mission needs both an alchemist and a knight? <sighs> That's probably a story for another time. The work was not nearly as glamorous as the Empire would make it out to be. In the end, I couldn't bring myself to stay, so I left, taking the locket with me. I haven't seen Alethea since. Ooh, uh, he... I'm gonna do that one. What? She didn't follow you? Her job was more important than her girlfriend? If just... Sometimes love is to let each other go. Alethea had her own reasons for walking down the path she chose. I don't fault her for that. But I couldn't walk with her, so our paths diverged. How curious. This last encounter was the first time I had seen her in years. There is no reason to rip up an old wound, so... I have been keeping it a secret. But now I think we're all tired. We can talk more about this some other time. Elizabeth looks a bit shaken as she gets up and leaves. <sighs> Poor Elizabeth. It sounds like she's been through a lot. I wonder if she still loves her. Alethea, I mean. Uh, yeah. Well, I think she does. At least some part of her. Got it. It's so sad. But also beautiful in a way. It's odd. <laughs> anyway, that's enough of this. We should get back to work. All right, now I think everything is done. Let us end the day. The sun is setting over the town of Anemone Valley, and you and your strange group of companions have returned to the alchemy shop. As everyone gets settled, you and Elizabeth stand together observing this strange group. Well, child, when I originally sent you out to bring back ingredients, this is not what I had in mind. Mage, you keep your hands to yourself. I won't have you cooking up some vile magic using the remains of this shop. I was simply trying to be a helpful guest, picking up some of the debris but if you don't trust my abilities 
Perhaps Anne would be so kind as to use some of her tinker magic to fix this. I specialize in magic-infused items, Michael. I can't just repair any chair or table I come across. So you have specialized mages for fixing a table? Well, of course not. The mages specializing in furniture do both chairs and tables. Don't be absurd. And you wonder why I don't get magic from the Mage Academy. Elizabeth sighs. It seems every time I send you outside on an errand, you return with more and more eccentric characters. I fear I should put you on house arrest. Uh, I, did I did used to, to pick, pick up strays when I was a kid, here. remember? I'd say this is a bit more serious than a stray kitten. I understand why you brought these people here, and... I just worry all of this activity will draw... unwanted attention to us. I skipped. I skipped! I don't know how... Oh. I understand why you brought these people here, and... I respect Victoria's judgment. I just worry all of this activity will draw unwanted attention to us. There's a sudden knock on the door, and the conversation dies. This is strange. Who could that be at this hour? Elizabeth walks over to answer the door. She has barely turned the handle when it bursts open. The imposing figure of Goldner forces his way in, sneering at the group that awaits him inside. Good evening, Madam Alchemist. I hope you don't mind a bit of a surprise visit. Two more men step into the shop, their figures imposing as they push past the mine owner and into the shop. Elizabeth keeps her cool, but you notice her knuckles turning white as she clutches her cane. Messer Goldner, what an unexpected surprise. What brings you here at this late hour? There's a crash as one of the men roughly pushes the remains of a bookshelf aside in order to make his way out to the kitchen. Goldner grins smugly. Merely the concerns of a good neighbor. You see, the lads and I have been quite distraught about these strange occurrences. Hmm. First the forest, and then this strange fire. And now it has come to our attention that an outlander is sneaking around somewhere in town. We were merely concerned and wanted to check in on you, to make sure he hasn't been hiding out somewhere in the remains of your shop. There's a crash out the back, the sound of something shattering. Your friends sure are a set of clumsy fellows. Are they like this when you invite them home for tea too? Must be a hassle. Ah, I remember you. You were down at the flower shop as well. Magic filth plotting together, are you? No wonder we citizens have to take matters into our own hands. Talk about pots and kettles. The mines have made you rich by providing resources to magic scum like me. So, what exactly does that make you? You filthy little. You know as soon as the words leave your mouth that you've struck a nerve. Goldner's face contorts into something ugly, and he raises his hand. Smack! That is quite enough. Elizabeth moves way too quickly for such an old lady. 
a cane smacking the man's hand roughly away before he can hit you. I have tolerated your abhorrent behavior for the sake of keeping things civil, but I will not tolerate you laying even a finger on my apprentice. You have never heard this tone in Elizabeth's voice. Ever. Sure, you have seen her bad. This is something entirely different. A level of absolute raw fury that makes even the man before her shrink back under her assault. This is... Sparta! Don't you dare speak like this to me. Do you even understand what you're doing? Oh, I understand perfectly. Now, be so kind as to get lost. The man looks furious, eyes flickering between you and your teacher. Okay, I'm putting this to a poll for the chat. Give me this keyboard. Call in the cavalry or step in ourselves. One minute on the poll, starting now. At least that's how I'm interpreting those two options. Because the star usually means that we're in, like we're bringing in another character. Uh, and uh, the other option right now is the determined choice. So I think that one is us stepping in front of him by ourselves. That one would be calling in our friends for help. Bow, bow, bow. Only a couple people voting. Oh, hey, let me show you what the poll's doing. There you go. Choose! Choose now! Ba -ba -ba. Looks like we are going to step in ourselves. I like that choice, guys. I agree. You stand beside Elizabeth, giving her your full support. You heard the lady. Time for you to leave, Miss Eyre. The guys from the back return and take in the scene. Looking a bit unsettled by the angry alchemists. They immediately join Goldner on either side, standing tall and intimidating. What's up, Jay? Welcome to the party. Goldner smirks smugly. <laughs> you really have some nerve talking to me like that. Be grateful we have other matters to attend to tonight. But this is not the end of this. He leaves, his goons following right along behind him. There's a collective sigh of relief in the room when the door slams shut. Elizabeth lets out a low chuckle, slumps against her cane, looking awfully pale. <laughs> hey now, teacher. Let's get you seated. I guess that was a little bit too much excitement for you, huh? <laughs> Elizabeth snorts as you carefully guide her over to a chair so she can sit down for a moment. That old weasel was hardly worth getting excited about. But I guess I have become a little too old for this kind of thing. I guess I have become a little too old for this kind of thing. It is my own fault, though, for not wanting to admit sooner that this was the obvious outcome. That man has been on our case for years now, always looking for a chance to get in and wreak havoc on our hard-won peace. That seems odd. Just, who were they looking for, anyway? What did they mean by Outlander? 
<sighs> they are a people of mountain dwellers living beyond the borders of the Alathean Empire. They are a reclusive society that rarely interacts with any of their neighboring states. The fact that one of them shows up here, this time, it's highly suspicious. A stranger far away from home, caught in a local conflict due to their race. How very predictable. Uh, let's do... <laughs> well, if they're able to send Goldner into a frenzy like this, we gotta help him. <laughs> if nothing else, then just to stick it to that pompous bastard. You do realize. What, you want to go outside? Don't you think it's best if we stay out of this? We're already in way too much trouble for my liking. <laughs> Come on now, Anne, my dear. Where's your hero's spirit? Some poor fellow is out there in the city being chased by an angry mob. Don't you want to lend a hand? Anne just glares at him dully, then sighs. Hmm. I guess we could go take a look. Okay. I agree that catching this person first seems to be in our interest, but he could have gone anywhere in town by now. Outlanders are magical beings though, right? Shouldn't a hunter like you be able to track him down? <sighs> About that. We should at least give it a try, right? He might have important information that could help us. <sighs> I'm loath to admit it, but I agree with you, Mime. We don't have a lot of time, but Paragons help you if any of you try something funny. Fun? In your presence? <gasps> Perish the thought. You head out into the streets. Begin your search. Give me just a second, guys. Uh, okay. I'll have to address that later. Okay, uh... Victoria takes the lead, hand firmly planted on the hilt of her sword, and eyes hard and focused. The streets are quiet at this late hour, and you notice nothing suspicious on your way to the market square. So, Victoria, you can sense magic as well? I guess that explains how you found me out in the forest back then. Actually... Hunters can't sense magic. It is the swords they carry that guide them towards chaotic magic. They are holy weapons, forged by rituals following the teachings of Izith, the paragon and founder of the Mage Academy. <sighs> I guess I shouldn't be surprised you would know about these practices, Anne. Hunters did save my life by bringing me to the Academy, so... I've made it a point to be well informed. Saved your life, huh? Also, Michael, would you stop that? I'm trying to concentrate. He's just pelvic thrusting in the background. You turn to Michael, who is smirking innocently. A little purple flame dancing in his palm. Sorry, sorry. I was just curious as to how effective the holy weapon of yours was. Honestly, all I see is the piece of dragon bone strapped to the hilt of your sword. Really? Dragon bone? It's quite the rare material. Dragons have been gone for centuries, after all. But it's quite popular in the use of weapon making, since it provides the wielder a bit of an edge, so to say, over magical opponents. <laughs> Don't be absurd. Dragons? Really? That sounds like a fairy tale. Victoria, don't you agree? Emile says, <laughs> bone. But Victoria doesn't answer, her head snapping to the side at the same time as Mime's ears perk up in attention. Um... Guys? I'm sensing another sudden burst of spirit energy. In that... In... 
In that instant, a familiar kid comes shooting around the corner, wide-eyed and out of breath. Alchemist! <sighs> I'm so glad I found... I was going to the alchemy shop, but... Ronan, my brother, I saw him. I'm that guy. Uh, we'll go kind. <laughs> Slow down there, Kim. Take a deep breath. Kim tries to comply, taking a deep breath in. And now you release it? <sighs> he wheezes, letting it out, blue in the face. Well? My brother... He was with a group of people, and they were all dragging this tall guy with them. I followed them out of town. It looked like they went into the mines. Awesome. Well done, Kim. We'll go investigate at once. Really? I I'm coming along, too. I want to help. Actually, you've done enough, Kim. Please, trust us that we can do our work now, too. Okay? I... Fine. I'll leave it to you, but please take care, okay? Kim leaves, and you follow his directions to the mines. You arrive and head inside, the faint glow of the crystals the only thing lighting your way. Once you go in further, you notice someone standing guard. You're pretty sure you've seen him around town, buying flowers from Quinn's shop. But now, his expression empty, eyes unfocused, like he isn't entirely there. Yep. That one's definitely influenced by a spirit. Mm. Bad time to take a sip. This is bad. If he sees us, then he'll alert... Whoever is in there. <sighs> There's no obvious way to sneak up on him either. Hmm? Don't you know some alchemy remedy that might help us out? Maybe something that will knock him out for a bit? <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Though, you should probably be careful not to hurt him. <laughs> hmm. You say that, but... Witnesses are such a hassle. I wondered when the alchemy was going to come into play. Uh, let's do sleeping draft, not eternal sleep. We need... One of those. One of those. Ooh, actually, I'm going to do this real quick. I can do that with this. And I just got to turn this guy a couple times. Cool, yeah. That is a sleeping draft. Ooh. Only a one star. Let's try that again. Hold on. This is to use two ingredients or less. That guy and... Ow. I pulled this off. Do that. What? Ouch. Not how that's going to work. I can't use two ingredients or less to do this. That's impossible. Only way to do it. Right there. Two ingredients or less, one turn or less, two turns, and two ingredients or less. How the fick do I do that? Because I need... 
that blue one. And I need two of the green. And I only get one of those per ingredient. Oh, that'll do it right there. That's what I wanted to do. I pulled in the wrong two ingredients the first time I tried this. Okay, like that. It's still three turns. Why isn't letting create? There we go. That's a two star. Is there a way to do that? two turns or less. That would take three turns. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe two stars good enough? I just, I don't see another way to do this. I definitely need two of the white flowers. There's no other way to do it with what I've got right now. Can I turn the other way? There we go. That's how you do it in two turns. That's so much easier. Use one turn or less? How? How could I possibly use one turn? Oh, here's how. Okay, so I gotta choose. I'm not gonna get all four stars. Oh, you get all four stars by doing it multiple times. <laughs> it all comes together. I did it. You craft the potion. Take a moment to weigh the vial in your hands before you throw it into the cave. The glass shatters and a thin white mist spreads. The guard looks around, startled, making a move, excuse me, to run, and then immediately slumps forward, collapsing on the floor. Well, isn't this neat? That was effective. <laughs> Alchemy can be kind of scary. Actually, don't worry, I made sure the potion only knocked him out. Oh, really? Fascinating. It makes me curious just what other stuff this harmless type of magic is capable of. <sighs> Don't get any ideas. We should move while we still have the element of surprise. Always so cold. Very well. Let's go. You wander deeper into the mine passage ends in an open cave, hiding behind a pile of big rocks, someone standing in the center. <gasps> it me! A man is on his knees on the cold cave floor, and before them stands Ronan, his frightening demon form. You have to excuse my lack of manners, but I am growing impatient. Me and my brethren here have been waiting quite a while for this moment. And your stubborn hero charade is honestly starting to piss me off. So I will ask you for the last time, how do we break the seal? The man on the ground is unlike anyone you have ever seen before. His skin, colorless gray, 
hair white as snow. But along his exposed arm run glowing blue markings like crystal orb. When he looks up to glare at the demon, his eyes are alight in the same gemstone glow. You are fooling yourself if you think I'd ever bargain with a demon. Your end will come soon enough, and you will return to your prison once more. <laughs> Ronan lets out a low cackle. And you believe that you will be the one to do that? The valiant hero swooping in to save the day? How well is that working out for you? Hmm? My failure is my shame to bear. I cannot change that. But I refuse to add any more regrets to my name. I will tell you nothing. <laughs> and it's good that there are other ways for me to gain your cooperation. With a wave of his hand, a demon appears at his side. Tall, lanky, soulless eyes staring down at the Outlander, almost hungry. The Outlander looks mildly queasy, but hides it well behind a sneer. So you intend to have this one possess me? You don't have the courage to do so yourself? I usually prefer to be more hands-on. However, this body I'm inhabiting still has its uses. So I can't give it up quite yet. Do not fear, though. My brother here is quite capable of the task. The demon moves in, and the Outlander tries to shift away. But there's nowhere to go. You observe the cave carefully, feeling a spark of nerves settle in your stomach. So, this was what you agreed to back when you made the deal with Alethea. These demons are not kidding around. You know from first-hand experience, yet something has to be done. Uh, I am ready for this. I accept the path I have chosen and I will emerge victorious. Or, I am afraid I have taken on too much, but I will push through my fears to do what is right. Choose! Confidence or doubt. One minute on the clock, starting right now. Vote in the chat. There's that poll. <laughs> no confidence. <laughs> this is a close one. Looks like it might be confidence as time is ticking away on this vote. Confidence it is. Kyle, why did you make that guy so hot? How dare you? I, I don't know what you're talking about. I just did what they told me to do. Confidence it is. You step into the room boldly. Enough of this, Ronan. This ends here. I won't allow you to hurt any more people. Ronan's red eyes turn to you. His head tilts curiously to the side with a wicked grin. <laughs> well, if it isn't the little alchemist. I could have sworn I'd left you dead in a ditch not too long ago. How interesting. 
Well, that gives me a welcome opportunity to thank you. If it hadn't been for your timely arrival back in that alley, I would never have succeeded in possessing this foolish human properly. But, alas, you are not useful to me now. So it's time for you to die. For real this time. Yeah, that's not going to happen. I agree. After all, it would be a hassle if my guinea pig was to die before I even got to start my research. You and Mime do what you have to do. We'll make sure you're not interrupted. Let's do this! Match the pattern to banish the demon! Oh, shit, I gotta match the whole pattern, stupid. <laughs> what? Fuck. Nope, other way. Pathetic. This is... It seems I've underestimated you, Alchemist. Trust me when I say that will not happen yet. The man disappears into the shadows. You turn to the stranger on the ground who watches you. Curiously. <laughs> you look like someone who could use a hand. You say, walking up to him, and the stranger lets out a low chuckle as you help untie his hand. Thank you. Help would be most appreciated. Yes. Thank you. He looks up at you. His eyes are piercing, glowing orbs of light. They are beautiful, if a little bit unnerving. Romance time! <laughs> well, I couldn't just let him go and ruin that handsome face of yours. You're, you grin as you help untie his hands. The stranger blinks. You swear for a moment the color of his eyes turns a warmer hue as he chuckles awkwardly. Huh? Thank you, I guess. He looks past you to where the others are standing, and he bows his head deeply. I am most grateful to all of you. That was quite a dangerous situation I found myself in. <laughs> yeah. You really got yourself in a fine mess there. Just who are you? And how did you end up captured by such fine people? My name is Caden. And as for how I came to be here, I was trying to help stop these demons leaking out of their prison. However, my efforts seem to have done nothing more than make the situation worse. So you had something to do with the demons escaping into town? Victoria's hand is already reaching towards her sword, and Michael tucks. How about we let the man talk before you draw that thing, hmm? That's new. You said you were trying to stop the demons from escaping some prison? Does that mean the spirits were locked away somewhere nearby? <sighs> That is correct. This underground cavern hosts one of the few known demon prisons within the borders of the Alethean Empire. The underground crystal ore seems to have been used to form a protective seal. Not unlike how the Goddess of Mercy won the final battle of the dragons by casting a spell. What? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, War of Dragons? I think I might have been absent in class when that was covered. Hmm? You went to school? Uh, well, no, but if I did, I would have missed that class for sure. I don't understand. You don't know? How is that possible? Maybe 
The Dags use other terms? <laughs> These are all legends of the old religion. I'm afraid, my tall friend, that you will have to fill us in, as these stories are not commonly told among people in this land. How curious. Well, that's... puzzling. I suppose I can give it a try. Though I am no bard. A great many centuries ago, before there were humans or outlanders, the Elder Ones who inhabited the continent were at war with the ancient dragons. The war ended when one of the seven gods, the goddess of mercy, cast a spell and sealed away the spirits of the dragons for good. The world was finally at peace. She and her brethren This legend inspired many powerful mages in the centuries to come. They strived to create similar spells, to get rid of unfavorable spirits. These ancient spells relied on the crystals that occur naturally beneath this continent to fuel their seal. My people hold records over many such spirit prisons spread out across the continent, one of which resides under this valley. We became aware that humans were now mining this resource. We suspected that might have unfavorable consequences. <sighs> Weakened the seal. Exactly. I came here to mend the damage that had been done. That is sounding really crunchy on my end of things. Sorry guys, give me one second while I fix that. Uh, I just gotta fix it for myself. My own self. Not for you guys. Should... Oh, it's crunching there too? Okay, well. Good to know. I wish I knew why that was happening. Uh, let's go this way, right... Yon. I gotta turn that down. Okay, that should hopefully fix the crunch. Oh, hey, I gotta go back into the game. Though, looking back now, I probably should have gone about this differently. I had brought with me an artifact for the task, and was in the midst of performing the ritual to mend the rift, when one of the miners interrupted me. I'm... Actually, not too sure what happened after. The ritual failed, and I woke up in that man, Goldner's estate. I learned that he was the one in charge of the mining activity, and tried to explain the situation to him. However, he proved to be quite difficult. Yeah, that tracks. Good old Goldner, always being an ass. Even when the safety of the world is at stake. That blasted idiot refused to listen to reason. He kept me locked up for days. And when I finally made a lucky escape, he and his goons chased me all across town. That sounds better, right, guys? It's not just me that that, that improved for. It improved for you guys, too, I hope. And I lost them. But then ran straight into those demon-possessed humans. Good. And, well... You know the rest. Looks like you've had a real stellar introduction to the outside world. How shocking. This is all so much new information my head's spinning. Dragon spirits? The mines? What are we going to do about all this? Mmm. Well, what's our motivation on this one, guys? What's my motivation, Director? I mean, I don't know that it necessarily matters, but... Probably won't change the story much. 
But let's have a poll. Let's see what you guys think our motivation is. Are we determined to stop Goldner or diplomatic because we got to do what we got to do? If it's a tie, I'm leaning towards this one. Towards Goldner must pay. But I will go where the wind blows if it's not a tie. Make your decision, Chet. Aldo says diplomatic all the way. Looks like Chad's leading, leaning with me. Yep. Goldner must pay. We can't let Goldner get away with this. Is there a question mark there? Victoria, can't the knights do something? I am afraid that will be difficult. He might be quite insignificant on the political scene, but he is still a mine owner. Getting him charged with, well, anything, when we only have a foreigner as a witness, that would be difficult, if not impossible. Well, what do you know, Victoria? I didn't think I'd see the day a knight would admit the system was corrupt. Honesty suits you. <sighs> oh, get lost, Michael. I never said the Empire was perfect, but unlike you, I prefer to make positive changes while keeping order, instead of simply burning the whole thing down. Gotta make change from within, man. That's how change happens. You say that as if the world weren't already on fire. Is no one going to address the fact that all of this is based on what? A legend? Dragons and spells of some forgotten goddess, none of this is based on factual information. The records kept by my people are not lacking. If you want proof, then I am sure we can cross-reference it with any of this town's records. <laughs> That's going to be difficult. I don't follow. Back before our dear Academy Mage was born, the Empire decided keeping records was too troublesome. It's much easier to appear competent, after all, when all proof of your past mistakes disappears. So all such documents were destroyed. Whatever records they might have had in this town, they are gone. Together with the people who wrote them. So the people would willingly destroy their own history? That's madness. Welcome to your Madness? Society. This is Sparta! That's the second time I'm making that joke. Uh... Ooh. Alright. Either way, we're going with Caden, but... Do we trust Caden or side with Anne's skepticism? I ran out of characters, but you know what that means. <laughs> Pearl Heart says, trust the new husbando. Sir Air Dude, hello. Shout out to Sir Air Dude for last night. Bearing with us as we <laughs> marathoned through uh, and did not finish Wonderland's War versus the Stream over on BNB Tabletop. Why didn't that send? Please? There we go. Oh, hey, my bot's not running. <laughs> Trust him. Last time we trusted someone, it came to be a good decision. Let's make sure that this is on. 
That should get Pod back for us. Uh, looks like we are going to trust him. There we go. There's the link to BNB Tabletop. Uh, okay. His story does seem to match up with what we've experienced. And I don't see any reason why he would lie. I trust him for now. His story at least warrants some investigation. Don't you agree? I still think this is a waste of time, but whatever. Do as you please. With Anne appeased for the moment, Victoria turns to the Outlander, questions in her eyes. You mentioned some kind of spell that could stop this? I brought an artifact with me that has the power needed to mend tears and seals like these. If I'd succeeded in stabilizing it, then things could have gone back to the way they were. As long as no one went and broke it again. And did you say powerful artifact? <laughs> and please calm yourself. You'll scare the man. Look at that evil, mischievous glint in her eye. The artifact is one of my people's most valuable treasures. However... Well, what are you waiting for? Hand it over so I can take a look. <sighs> <sighs> Goldner took it, didn't he? He did. I have no idea where he might have taken it. Great. Now what? I mean, if the artifact is already stolen, then it's hardly a crime if we go and steal it back. Right? You know, we can't just waltz into the man's home and steal something. Why not? As a noble, no doubt he has all sorts of security to protect himself. Yeah, so we kill him. You're right. Or make him go to sleep. I just kill this Goldner guy and stop the mining. That would be the easy solution. How in the world is that the better solution? No one will have to die if we work smart. And trust me, you wouldn't survive the aftermath of such a scandal. <sighs> Spoil sport. We'll find a way to get the artifact back from Goldner, but we're going in with the proper plan. <sighs> There's still much about this whole situation that's too unclear. Well, if information is what we're after... Yes? Okay. You've got to go through as much of this ritual as you can with me. I also need some detailed descriptions of this artifact we're looking for. Okay, I'll go. There's no need to pull on me like that. Guess we're going back to the shop? Hmm. I wonder what Elizabeth is going to say to all of this. With the way things have been going lately, I'd say she's grown used to these sort of things happening. Did someone ever really get used to this? Such a strange group on such a strange quest. I wonder what will become of us all. You leave the mines and return to the shop for the night. Chapter 2 A Broken Legacy. You dream that night. A dream of a sparrow and raven sitting side by side. An owl dead beneath their branch. The woods are dark. The trees eerie, eerier still. And from their depths steps a man wearing a deer skull as a mask. This is only the beginning. You awake with a start, breathing heavily as the mists of the nightmare fade from your vision. Mime is still fast asleep. Or is she? Do spirits even sleep? You're not sure, but she doesn't stir even as you rise from your bed, the covers feeling damp, suffocating. You step outside your room to breathe. Your little quest comes to a halt, however, when you spot another resident awake at this late hour. Victoria slips out the front door of the shop, and 
you stand for a moment, weighing your option before you decide to follow. Staying as quiet as possible, you follow Victoria out into the alleyway behind the shop. Victoria. <laughs> I am ready to hear your report. You listen in as Victoria relays the day's activities to her commander. This is where we stand. I believe our next course of action should be to file for a warrant of the Goldner Estate, to retrieve the sword and... <laughs> that would hardly be a swift solution, would it? Victoria. That's not how you pronounce that word. Sword. To file such a request, and get it approved, might take weeks. And let's not forget, we'd need to disclose the reason why this magical artifact would have been entrusted to you instead of simply being destroyed. But the protocol... Hmm. Sometimes we find ourselves in situations where alternative measures must be taken. If what this outlander says is true, and the situation can be resolved by completing this ritual, then that is now your highest priority. With all due respect, Commander, this magic, we know nothing about it. It's as chaotic as it comes. I if the Paragon knew about this... I have already informed him of the situation, and he agrees with my assessment. What? The Paragon agrees. The sacrifice is worth it to keep the peace. Things are not as stable in the capital as they appear to be. An incident like this could cause a lot of unnecessary stress. I won't get into political details. Just know that this is by far the better option. <laughs> Politics, huh? Do you understand your orders? I do. Very well. I will be awaiting your report of a successful mission, then. The image disappears. You can no longer see Victoria's expression in the dark. Oh, okay. This is going to a poll. For sure. Choose! Do we approach her and presumably confront her about what we just heard? Or do we sneak off? Pretend like we didn't hear it. And I'm assuming, you know, wait to bring it up until later or maybe tell somebody else about it. I don't know. Looks like we're leaning towards approaching. Leaning heavily towards approaching. Bom, bom, bom. And we approach. You step out from your hiding spot and approach Victoria who lets out a sigh. <sighs> and just how long have you been standing there? <laughs> well, long enough to learn that your boss isn't going to win any humanitarian awards. That's... Don't pretend to know the situation. Alethea has her reasons. <sighs> Victoria lets out a heavy sigh. Sorry, I should have read that part seems there's no other way than to go through with this break-in. Damn it, this is not how I wanted this to go. <laughs> well, if it's any consolation, you shouldn't feel bad for Goldner. He's a grade-A asshole. He had it coming. 
I won't disagree, but this is not how things should work. I do not want to be the judge of who or what deserves punishment. People's opinions are flawed. I am flawed. The system ensures that I don't make a mistake. Ooh, your choice will impact Victoria's path going forward, so we gotta do a poll on this one. Bum, ba, ba, ba. Choose systems made by people, or we do need laws. Something along those lines, anyway. What say you, Chet? What's a Geneva Convention violation, anyway, says Kendra. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> People made the law, so the law is flawed, as flawed as people. Yeah, that's a valid, valid perspective, Pearl Heart. I don't know, though. But I don't have to make the choice. You guys do, so... All right, the system is made by people, too. About that. Well, the system isn't perfect either. If we all agreed that murder was okay, then that would be a law, but it wouldn't be right. I think being able to assess your own morals and stand up to people in power when you think they're wrong is a true form of courage. Victoria is silent for the longest time, mulling over your words. No. I don't agree with you. How can a society work without any rules? Why should my morals be more valid than someone else's? <sighs> Victoria sighs. Why are we even discussing this? No matter. Go back to bed. I have work to do. Uh... Ooh, I don't know which one of these choices to go with. We're obviously romancing. Timid, flirt, flirtatious, or what was the other one? Oh, I got a bloop a doop Concerned. One minute on the clock, starting right now. <laughs> How can I sleep when you're not in bed with me? We are romancing her with any one of these choices, by the way. It's just what flavor of romance, which potentially influences how successful we are. I don't know. Twitch Mobile does not want to let you vote, huh? I'm sorry. I don't know why. Looks like we're going to flirt. <laughs> Flirtatious it is. How could I possibly sleep? Knowing you're out there all by your lonesome. And I would instead be at your side. Victoria cracks her knuckles. <sighs> I am not getting paid enough for this. If you're having trouble sleeping, I'm sure we can find a solution for that. Uh, 
<laughs> right. <laughs> I'll, uh... I'll go to bed. <sighs> Clever choice. Victoria disappears down the street, and you return to your room with a sigh. As you get up to face a new day, the sound of the valley waking up is strikingly normal. Things are not what they used to be. Your mind no longer lingers on mundane issues like your upcoming graduation, flower festival. Instead, it dances around these strange new companions you have gathered. The quest ahead of all. Mime, too, seems to be in a more serious mood. She is sitting by the broken window, staring out into the street, far away looking. I wonder... Something interesting happening outside? Demon uprising? An angry mob? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing of the sort. Everything looks just the same as it did yesterday. About that. It really went and took a turn on us, didn't it? Ancient spirit prison, huh? Wow, this is all so much bigger than I thought. I think because you turned out okay, it didn't really occur to me just how many people would get hurt by this. How many are going to end up like that kid, Kim? Losing someone they care about to madness. I wonder... You tackled the incident with Ronan yesterday so confidently. You didn't seem to doubt even for a second that we would be able to handle the situation. Meanwhile, all I could think about was how I could get away. Uh, I'm gonna go with this one. This is it. Hey, we can beat this. We have an awesome team behind us, and I have you. I'm sure we'll end up victorious. Are you sure? I hope you're right. I really do. <laughs> anyway, that's not really important right now. We should meet up with the others. It doesn't take long before your group of companions have gathered in the small shop. Some more awake than others. Victoria, sitting in the corner, sipping on a coffee, looking a bit haggard, like she didn't sleep at all. Are you okay, Victoria? You look a bit... What our dear spirit friend is trying to say is, you look like you have been coughed up by a cat. Victoria's eye twitches. I'm fine. I was up all of last night investigating this Goldner's mansion. I'm afraid Anne's guess was correct. The place is heavily guarded, and I sensed magic somewhere inside as well. Traps? Or something else? That man is quite a hypocrite, isn't he? Hating magic, but then turning around and using it to protect himself. I agree. However, that doesn't make the situation any less... difficult. What about you, our tall friend? Anything useful to add about how you escaped that place? As an agent of my people, you can imagine that I'm not entirely without skill myself. Going back in, however, if it wasn't due to the gravity of our situation, I would never consider it. It's a great risk, but we have no choice. We need that artifact now. Failure is not an option, which means I'm going to need your assistance, all of you. Wait, what? I need your help. There is a moment of stunned silence as the words sink in. I've got to admit, I did not expect that. Did the knight herself really just ask for our help? <laughs> Does this mean you actually think of us as a team? Oh, this is so exciting! Don't get ahead of yourself. I still think a lot of you are dangerous individuals who must be watched. However... 
Are we finally starting to grow on you? <sighs> Don't be ridiculous. We need a way in. We need to deal with any guards and traps we encounter. And we need to locate the artifact. Hmm. I'm sure someone working for Goldner would know where he'd store an artifact like that. I've seen his guards hang around the tavern at night. A bit of friendly eavesdropping might be enlightening. As for any magical items we might come across, I'm sure our resident Tinker Mage will be quite capable of handling that. Wait, what? He wanted to know more about this Outlander artifact as well. Did you not? Well, yes, but... Uh... If that's settled, perhaps we can use alchemy to get inside? It worked quite well down in the tunnels, and Elizabeth might have some ideas if we go ask her. That's... actually not a bad plan, Mime. Really? That's great! Ooh, this is so exciting! It's starting to sound like we're going on some grand adventure together! Do we need a team name? Legendary heroes always have a team name! Something cool, like... The Valiant Victors, or, or maybe the Demon Detectives. <laughs> We're gonna be amused by that idea. Demon Detectives, huh? That's, uh, <laughs> quite the name. It's pretty cool, right? No. <laughs> it's certainly unique. I'm not sure I'm following this weird topsider tradition. Jay's suggestion makes me laugh. Could also be the ones who fuck. <laughs> if we're a team, can I then veto this? I veto this. <sighs> you guys are no fun. But tell me, Anne, what was life like at the Academy? Why do you ask? I thought you were confident the Academy was a horrible mage prison. Oh, uh, yes. But that doesn't mean I know how you felt growing up there. I thought your perspective would be... valuable to consider. That's... rather pragmatic of you. Very well. I'll bite. The Academy is a wonderful place. A safe haven for mages to study and research without fear of the ignorant masses who wish us harm. Everything's in perfect balance, just like Izith intended. Does that answer your question? It certainly confirms that they brainwashed the lot of you, that's for sure. <sighs> that's it. I'm done talking to you. Uh, okay. Let's go to the mall. We'll look for Anne at the flower shop. Your search for Anne takes you to Quinn's shop, and the florist gives you a friendly smile as you enter. Hey there, you two. Welcome back. Anne mentioned you would be dropping by. She's in the back, just... Uh, be careful where you step in there, okay? Right. That sounds kinda ominous. <laughs> I take it Anne has made herself at home? We've rearranged one of the storerooms so she can use it as her workshop while she's here. She's done an impressive job, but I tend to get a bit, uh, nervous around Tinker Magic. Too many sparks and Moving parts. <laughs> anyway, you should go take a look for yourself. Let's go! Right. Excuse us. Curiosity and dread settle in your stomach as you make it out to the back and enter what was a storeroom. Now transformed into a makeshift workshop. Weird bits and pieces of tools and Gadgets are scattered about everywhere, and a huge stack of books is towering ominously in the corner. In the middle of it all, scribbling away, sits Anne. 
not looking up from her notes even as you enter. Ah, you two. Glad you could make it. Well, we're gonna romance her, obviously. Uh, and I'm gonna put it to you guys. Happy to be here is the timid approach. Always for you, Anne, is the flirtatious approach. And this place is amazing is the happy approach. How do we romance Anne? Uh, timid, flirtatious, oh god, learn to spell, Kyle, or happy. One minute on the clock, starting right now. Go for it. Vote in that poll. Chit chat. Of course you guys are going to take the flirty approach. Why do I even bother? We'll see, though. A couple people saying take the happy approach. Oh, oh, we may, do, we may take a different approach with Anne than we did with Victoria. I feel like the, the different choices for how you romance people, you'll probably get different, like, varying degrees of success, depending on which approach you use with who. Like, I suspect Victoria is probably going to be more receptive to, uh like a more straightforward, like a more, more of a straight shooter type. Anne is probably going to be more receptive to timid, maybe vice versa. I don't know. Michael is definitely the guy that's going to be receptive to flirting. Uh, okay. Happy it is. That's amazing. Wow, Anne. This place looks amazing. How did you get all this equipment? <laughs> Thank you. The Academy provides promising students with research stipends, so I had all this prepared and shipped here before I left. It isn't nearly as impressive as the proper research facility I'll have access to once I become a professor, but it'll do nicely for now. She closes her notes with a snap and hops over to you, eyes glinting with anticipation. Let me have a look at that locket. We're romancing again. Flirty, timid, or careful. I'm gonna put it to you guys. What the hell? Timid, careful. Go! Vote now! Or forever hold your peace. One minute on that clock. Uh, and just so you know which is which, I'll go through them again. Say please is the flirtatious version. Right, here you go, is the timid. And let's do this science thing is the cheerful. I said careful. Cheerful is what I meant. If you vote careful, that means cheerful. Oopsie. Looks like we're going flirty, though. Most likely. We got away from the flirty vibes on j just the last conversation prompt. Flirtatious it is. <laughs> so demanding. Haven't you ever heard of saying please? <sighs> Could you please hand me the locket? I'm eager to get started on this since you asked so nicely. You hand the locket to Anne, who makes a muffled sound of excitement as she looks it over, forgetting all about you and mime as she rushes over to her desk. Anne brings out some different tools and begins poking and prodding away at the locket. She's so deeply focused, she doesn't seem to register you at all. Um... This looks like it might take a while. Should we sit down? You find an empty space somewhere on the floor and sit down to wait. 
Mime makes a game out of stacking books for a while, before she dozes off against the pile, leaving you to watch Anne in silence. Her face is scrunched up, cute in thought, and you notice she taps her foot lightly when she writes, but stops when she falls even deeper into thought. When she tinkers with the locket, her hands move swiftly and efficiently, it's almost uncanny just how precisely she moves. Maybe that's what Tinker Magic looks like. I'm a genius. After what must have been almost an hour of silence, the mage finally puts down her tools, stretching her arms above her head with a grin. Okay, I think I've got it. Huh? What? what? We got what? Huh? Mime awakes with a start, blushing as she rubs the sleep from her eyes. <laughs> you had the right idea, Mime. Now I feel I could use a nap. Wouldn't recommend it. The books are not that comfortable. So... This is indeed a spirit locket similar to the ones I used in the past. No one uses them anymore since they run on the energy of spirits, which is taboo. Oh... Also, there kind of aren't a lot of us left. The demons you have collected aren't as much sealed away as they are simply absorbed into the locket's power source. This means every demon you collect has in fact added to the total power of the locket. Quite fascinating. Ooh, uh... I'll do that. So... Now that wasn't what I expected, but I suppose if they're kept sealed away from people, that's still the better solution. Oh. I mean, yeah, keeping them away from hurting people is important, but I don't know, it, it still feels a bit wrong though, doesn't it? Using them as some sort of power source? Actually... As far as I can see, you haven't actually tapped into the locket's potential yet. You have been using a completely different power source. She looks to mine, blinks, pointing to herself. Huh? What? Oh, yes, me. I suppose I have been the one helping you, since we've always felt that glowy connection when we seal one of those bad guys away. Oh, fascinating. You have been using your magic to help Nines all this time, you do not feel yourself weakening? No way. I feel completely fine. Anne taps her chin with her pen before noting down a few more things in her book. So... Spirit alchemy is already a known school of the arcane, so I will not learn anything new poking my nose down that trail. The fact that you have to rely on another scarce power source that will deplete over time isn't fixing anything is creating a new dependency. No. Interesting aspect of this still remains you, Mime. Whoa! Uh, me? Actually... My theory is that since you two are soul-bound and not connected through the locket, the energy you channel from Mime isn't draining her. Of course, if you were to do something very challenging, I'm sure you both would be able to feel the strain, but you would recover, just like a mage recovers after having used their powers. This. In short, Amazing. your connection has given Nines the same magical potential a mage possesses. <laughs> and just when you thought you couldn't possibly get into any more trouble. Yikes! We really have to find a way for us two to get unbound again. You do realize... Well, I wouldn't recommend that now, since we still need you two to be connected to seal away the demons we'll undoubtedly come across. Spirit magic, soul binding... Creating mages. These all scream taboo, but I must admit, finding a way to equip non-mages with magical potential would really change how we all think about magic. If magical items didn't need a power source, but people themselves could just power them on their own. Such a discovery, even if not put into practice, would be quite an achievement. Enough to grant me my title for sure. <laughs> yeah, 
That's gonna go down well, giving normal people powers like that. What could go wrong? <sighs> I just provide the research that says it's possible. What humanity's... What humanity decides to do with this knowledge is not my problem. Ooh, okay. Big choice. Big, big decision here. This will affect Anne's path going forward. Choose. You're right. Not your problem. Uh, not your responsibility is what I'm going to put for the first choice. Or, yes, you are. <laughs> Those are your two options. Vote now or forever hold your peace. You guys having fun playing through this game? I'm liking it. Enjoying this little playthrough. Steel Neko says, I think if we want her to like us, we should pick the first. But everybody's voting for the second, so there's that. Make your votes, folks. I am really enjoying this this uh this game. I hope you guys are too. It's a fun one to stream in particular to to do the the voiceover live like this for all the unvoiced lines. Uh all right, we're going with of course you're responsible for what you create. You You can't just dismiss your responsibility like that. Sounds to me like you're just making excuses because you don't want to admit anything bad might come out of this. Is your professor title worth that much to you? I can't believe this. You have no idea what that title means to me. You don't know me or what I've been... Excuse me. What I've been through to get this far. If I don't claim this discovery, someone else will eventually, so I'm not going to hold myself back just because the rest of humanity is a bunch of morons. She hands you back your locket. That's all I wanted to research for today. Thank you for your cooperation. I'll be calling upon you again when I need to learn more. <laughs> I think that's our cue to go. You and Mime leave. On your way out, you notice Anne returning to her little mountain of books, massaging her arms with a pained expression. So, you really are a hunter, huh? Former hunter. But yes, what about it? <gasps> what was it like? Did you save a lot of people? What is the biggest demon you've ever fought? You are... Oddly excited about this. Why wouldn't I be? Hunters are the keepers of balance in this world. The sword that shields us from untamed magic and demons. You shouldn't put such faith in fairy tales, Anne. Uh, hey, wait! What did she mean by that? She meant, don't be stupid, stupid. Uh, I'm gonna go to the flower shop real quick, talk to Quinn. Quinn's flower shop is warm and pleasant. Scent of fresh flowers indicates that a new shipment might have arrived. You are, however, not the only one in the shop. You recognize the guard from yesterday, talking with Quinn at the counter. Here you go. These flowers will be sure to make your fiancé smile. I'm glad. I know they will. It's been a while since I've brought her any, after all. Thank you. Honestly, I'm, I'm so... Uh, listen, I, I'm not good at this, but I... I realized last night that I'd let some baseless rumors get to me. I, I want to apologize. What? Oh dear, no, there, there's no need for that. You see... 
But there is, though. I, I might not have said it to your face, but I've thought some pretty horrible things, and I... I don't know what came over me, that there's no excuse. I am sorry. Thank you. I, uh... I, I accept your apology. Thank you. Well, uh, I'll be off. Time to present these to Louise. Have a nice day. The man walks past you, giving you a pleasant smile before he leaves. It didn't look like he recognized you at all. Maybe because he didn't see me? As I threw the sleeping potion at him without him noticing? About that. It's probably because we defeated Ronan yesterday. By weakening the host demon, he probably lost his influence over that guy and he returned to normal. Just like all of those people during the fire. I'm glad. Yeah, we did great. We're a great team. <laughs> we really did, didn't we? Wow. It's so strange to see the result of our hard work. Let's keep being great. Welcome back. Nines, welcome. How's your mission going? Uh, let's ask him about that, about or ask them about that dude. Uh, yeah, about that guy who just left. Ah, uh, yes, quite sweet, wasn't he? I haven't had anyone come and apologize to my face like that before. Oh, how refreshing. Maybe there's hope for me in this village yet. Uh, I'm gonna do this. Really? You're not mad about how he was treating you? Hmm? Well, of course I was mad and hurt. He'd been one of my most loyal customers, after all. But if he's made an effort to better himself, and even came here to offer his apologies? Well, then I want to support that. The world has enough hate in it already. And I've always found it exhausting to hold a grudge. I'm gonna go with this one. I'm glad. Eh, I agree. I wouldn't want to go around carrying that kind of grudge myself. <laughs> Forgiveness is almost like magic in its own right. It isn't much, but it is a thing only you can control. In that sense, it has power. I'm glad this turned out well. Tell me. So, about... uh, did you learn anything from the samples I brought you? <laughs> ah, yes, I should have known you would ask about that. The answer is both a yes and a no. I am confident, after communing with the soil, that it was no fire. The branches told me no disease has killed them either. It's quite strange, as if the very life of them was drawn out in an instant. I felt no pain, nor fear. One moment they were living, and the next they were not. Uh, um. well, that sounds terrifying. I agree. How curious. I can only assume some very powerful magic was at play, but I have never seen anything like it. It is definitely not anything that would ever be approved at the Academy. But that is all I can say for now. I hope it proves helpful. I'll be off then. Well, then that's all I need for now. I'll see you later, Quinn. Take care. You're always welcome, Nines. Take care. All right, and that's uh, that's about two hours. That's where I wanted to call it today. So I'm going to take us back over to the futon. Guys, thanks for hanging out with me on your Wednesday afternoon. I will be continuing this playthrough probably the next time I stream, if not soon. Uh, do me a favor, click that follow button. It's somewhere around there. Looks like a heart. That'll, and then, and then if you make sure and ring the bell that shows up after that, make sure it's purple. Purple's good. Gray is bad. Gray is off. Purple's on. If it's on, you'll get push notifications sent to your phone or email notifications sent to your inbox, depending on your account settings, every time this channel goes live. Also, do me a huge, huge favor. Go over to BNB Tabletop here on Twitch. Give that channel a follow. Turn on those notifications as well. That's my board game channel, my, my baby. It's my passion project. I love it very, very much. We will be streaming 
this Sunday night, as most Sunday nights, at 5 p.m. Pacific time, we're playing a game called Mechanica with guest Shay Parker, who is a board game content creator responsible for a YouTube channel by the name of RTFM, or the RTFM Show. Uh, he specializes in teaching people how to play complicated board games. And he's a super cool dude, and he's probably going to kick all our asses at Mechanica this Sunday night. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me, and I will, uh, I'll see you next time. Uh, stick around, because we'll probably be raiding somebody in just a second. Bye-bye, everybody!